Thank you. Um, I was, uh, I was like, I kept taking notes while you were talking. Um, but before I go into that, I just want to uh, note that I've been studying you carefully. Um, and not in that way, of course. But um, you know, I've been a big fan of you for a long time. And uh, I know that your views in education are probably uh, the ones that can maybe make all of academia change. Um, because you're uh, such a multifaceted person. Um, and, I, and I really felt that when I found this video of you on the web. Um, could you uh, uh, maybe uh, play uh, <laughs> the video that I found on the web? Thanks. What are you doing? I'm um, digging up bamboo shoots in my yard. Now go inside the beaker. So the next thing we do is we have to stew the uh, takenoko, the bamboo shoots, and get the aku, which is this kind of funny bitter taste. So uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> and, and who did the music for that? Uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto. Ryuichi Sakamoto. So yeah. like, how did you get Ryuichi Sakamoto to make a soundtrack to a bamboo hunting scene? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're actually old friends, so that helped. Um, but actually, I think he liked the idea that it was for bamboo hunting and cooking, cooking scene. And cooking. Yeah. Uh, did he you, likes did you, bamboo. Did you shoots. call him up to compose that, or how did that happen? No, I, I, I emailed him and said, hey, I'm going to do a video, and it's going to be kind of in this cool bamboo thing, and, and he likes trees. She likes trees. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Is that your backyard? Was that? That's my backyard. Yeah, this is, and this is pre-Fukushima. Oh, wow. So we don't do this anymore. Oh, so okay. we have, uh, it, we have a now a very, uh, uh, not a very thing. We, we have a, a measurable amount of cesium now in that, in that, that forest. So yeah. we, 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 don't, we don't do that anymore. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when Fukushima happened, you launched a whole thing to do radiation detectors, something like that? Yeah, so uh, I was actually at the Media Lab interviewing uh, for the job. and. What we did was we, uh, and I needed to find out what the radiation was and try to get it, up, get the word out. So we, um, um, I'll do this. The short version is that we we ended up um, starting a nonprofit um, to build Geiger counters, put them on cars, run around and measure them, and we have I think about 15 million um, measurements. At the beginning, the government hated us, but now we're the main source of open. Um, radiation measurements in the world, and everybody's trying to figure out how we did it, because we started after the earthquake, but we, our response has been, we have, we, have, we have a better organized network than any NGO or government, and we're pivoting now to um, air quality. But, but, it, but it was a really interesting experiment, because we just used the internet to collect all these people, including people like Ray Ozzie and others who, you know, all the people who happened to have time who knew exactly what we needed, but it was a, um, a very much a, a, a Pull, um, pull the resources from your network as you need them, and sort of to get to that metaphor about stocking knowledge in your brain. We, I didn't know anything, but within a month, we knew more than anybody in the government did. And now, you know, several years later, I, I think we have the largest movement. But it all started because I saw this cloud of radiation headed towards my house. And, um, and I thought about this bamboo, and could we eat? We wanted to measure things. and. Um, and we, and so did a lot of other people, but we activated this movement. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a real product of the internet. And, and I wouldn't call it rebellion, it wasn't rebellion, but it was um, completely anti-establishment because we, we, we knew they would fail because they, so, they were too prepared for the wrong thing. Hmm. This made me think about how you know, your presentation has sort of talked about the, the fallacy of institutions. And yet, uh, I think it was Jean Monnet said that we need institutions because they, they, they make things last. Mm -hmm. And so I love how you made an institution to solve the problem. And that's a lot from, I think, your background in venture capital, and mm -hmm. that you believe that money can create something mm -hmm. of good or of bad, et cetera. So none of that. But uh, we're in an institution, Pop Tech, and we're, gonna, uh, we're in this state called uh, Maine. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I, I asked uh, the president of Pop Tech, uh, Lisa Filderman, if she could help uh, find the bamboo shoot equivalent in Maine. Uh, and so I'd like to present to you officially, uh, uh, Joey, a potato. Thank you. Freshly, freshly pulled from the ground. 
Wow. And the Bamboo Shoot. Thank you, Letha, and, and uh, thank you very much, Joey. And uh, it was a great talk. Thank, thank you. you.